have for breakfast? Uh, what do we have? Protein shake, Protein coffee. Protein shake, coffee. That was about it. Okay. I had oatmeal, thank you. You had a protein shake and oatmeal? Mm -hmm. I do have oatmeal. A lot of calories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're good. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like this all morning. <laughs> okay. Um, so, just project, speak loudly, and then we repeat the answer, the question and the answer. So, if I say, what is your name? My name is... Okay. What did you have for breakfast? I had for breakfast. Oh, to okay. Give context. Gotcha, okay. gotcha, gotcha. Um, and there's no right or wrong. If you want to stop at any point, it's fine. Okay. So tell me your names and who you guys are. First. Um, I am Ned Drew. I'm a professor of graphic design at Rutgers University, in Newark. Oh. My name. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't repeat the question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great start. <laughs> my name is Ned. My name is Ned Drew, and I am a professor of graphic design at Rutgers University, New York. My name is Brenda McManus, and I am a uh, assistant professor of graphic design at Pace University in Lower Manhattan. You guys look right at this camera. Yeah, I wasn't this sure what it looked. Yeah, okay. this one. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> Are you guys York natives? If yes, how long have you? Um, if no, how long have you been here, and what brings you here? Well, I have a lifelong history with Newark. Um, my you have to repeat the oh, question. Sorry. Are you a <laughs> Are you a Newark resident? In or you could just say I'm not from Newark, but yeah, I'm not from Newark, but I do have a lifelong history with uh, the city of Newark. Uh, my parents are immigrants from Ireland, and um, when my father first immigrated here, he was working at uh, Budweiser in Newark, and my parents actually met at McGovern's. Um, a local uh, tavern here, because uh, in the 60s it was a uh, Irish social club, uh, and even though neither of my parents drink, uh, this is where they met. Um, so the city of Newark has been part of my story um, my whole life, and I went to Rutgers uh, University of Newark for my undergrad studies. Um, so yeah, I've been here quite a while. I am not a Newark native, um, but I started teaching at Rutgers Newark 25 years ago, moving up here from uh, Washington, D.C. after graduate school. Excellent. <clears throat> what inspired the creation of bread? And I'm saying uh, it correctly, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the creation of our studio, uh, Bread, really came out of um, the two of us wanting to collaborate and uh, work together um, and really have more creative control over the work that we were doing. Um, it really serves as a uh, experimental lab for us to really um, work on self-initiated design projects, although on occasion we will take on client work, um, but for the most part it is um, our own um, self-initiated experimental work that we um, create based off of observations and, and needs that we identify. And it was our niece that named it really because she kind of put our two names together. She would call us bread. So. Um, when did your love for letterpress begin? I think I'll, I'll take this one. Um, my love for letterpress started probably 30 years ago in undergraduate down at Virginia Commonwealth University, they had uh, some type and some small presses and um, I just kind of liked the physicality of it. And then for the past 30 years, uh, Brenda and I have been collecting at flea markets and other places, wood and lead type. Um, even when letterpress wasn't as uh, hot, it's really quite pervasive, pervasive now, but even when it wasn't hot, we were collecting um, just because the objects themselves are so beautiful. Um, but yeah, the collection that we built over the 20, 30 years is pretty substantial at this point. Man, for me, love of letterpress really started in undergrad here at Rutgers Newark. Um, there was two underutilized presses and um, was introduced to the process and, and just instantly fell in love with it. I love the, the manual uh, process, like trying to problem solve the puzzle aspect of it. Um, and it just created a lot of really um, free opportunities to be creative. So um, and yeah, it's been and something that we've really just 
uh, we've both grown with over for so long. It's just become part of. Yeah, because the presses nobody used the presses um, except special classes or special projects, and it's a really labor-intensive process. So if I was working with students, they kind of had to know what they were going to get into. Um, it's not an easy process whatsoever. So it was rare little bits and pieces until we moved down to Express Newark and moved the presses down there. Nice. Um, what was the first letter block you collected? What was the first letter <laughs> block we collected? I'm not really sure um, because it's been, maybe it's my memory and I just don't remember anything anymore, but I don't remember what the first one was. Uh, it could have been image, it could have been, probably was one of the larger letter forms. I know that my sister gave me a large N when we were uh, first dating. I think yeah. It was like a long time ago. But um, each piece though, and I think what's really fun about the collection is when we kind of go back through it, there are so many stories and memories attached to them. I couldn't put them in the sequence of when we acquired them. Um, but you know, you remember the, the place you found it, what we were doing, why we were drawn to it, you know, so they all kind of carry a little narrative, um, which to us, I think is kind of special. Yeah, because we would, like, we went to Tokyo and we ran across a lead foundry, a, a tight foundry, and we visited there. And then in Taipei, we went to uh, a, a lead foundry mm -hmm. um, and collected. And then there's probably, I don't know, at Los Angeles where my brother and sister are, we would visit there and we'd go to little flea markets or antique stores Dublin. in yeah. Dublin. Yeah, it's just wherever we would go, we'd be looking for the things because for the plot blocks and stuff because they, they're normally, they don't come as a full alphabet anymore. People break them apart and sell individual letters, which is kind of a shame. Um, so it's rare to find an entire font. Um, but Although there are still resources for that, yeah. like letterpress things, and there's a few places where you still can acquire the large... In the internet, but yeah. it's expensive on the internet. But the fun, the fun part, I think, is kind of rescuing these little, beautiful little pieces in, in the most random of places. Um, and that, that for us has been the fun, yeah. kind of the hunt for them. So. Okay. Um, what is your subject... Some of these questions are for uh, Sit Down New York. So um, it kind of bounced back and forth between. So when you guys are collecting letters or doing a print, what are some of the subject matters you like to talk about or print about? Um, yeah. Well, I, I, some of the some of the projects we work on um, or concepts for them are, as Brenda said, self-initiated. Maybe five years ago, I did a fictional redesign of the US currency system just because I don't like the currency the current currency system it's symmetrical and kind of cliche and dead white guys so we kind of reconceive them and and re